We're here today at the Moto IQ garage for a very special project car. Uh, this is a work of art. I, I'm pretty jaded. I, I don't like too many things and I don't get excited about hardly anything, but this is a, a very special vehicle that has made me really excited. Now, um, I'd like for everyone to introduce themselves. I mean, I know you recognize uh, at least Ravi here, but uh, who are you, Ravi? Uh, thanks, Mike. So my name is Ravi Dilwani, and I am the director of the high performance division for CSF Cooling. Uh, you and I have done tons of videos together, worked on race cars together. So uh, it's nice to have my new 911 project here along with uh, Simo Verahanta. And uh, why don't you introduce yourself also? Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Simo Viharanta. Um, I'm the owner of SV Automotive. And uh, we were very fortunate that Ravi approached us uh, for the build of this car. It's been an incredible experience, and uh, we're really excited about the outcome. So, Now, we're going to get into this sucker, and you'll be amazed at the attention to detail. Um, it's like a combination of race car and super detailed street car. It's like the ultimate resto mod and it's fully functional. Now, I, I have one thing to ask you, right? So you're the head of CSF. Yeah, that's correct. And you guys make uh, radiators mostly. And the irony is the CSF Porsche is air cooled. Uh, absolutely, and that's actually one of the comments that I've gotten the most since we've debuted the car, even throughout the build process, is why is a radiator company building an air-cooled Porsche? Uh, a lot of people may not know, uh, especially the ones who have made those comments, that we make all different types of heat exchangers. So that could be uh, you know, intercoolers, uh, different fluid heat exchangers like trans, power steering, but one of our big components that we make are engine oil coolers. This being an oil cool car, we de we designed um, you know a bunch of different uh, universal fit as well as specific application fit oil coolers for the 911. Now I was trying to be a smart ass, and uh, Ravi gave a very good answer. So uh, without further ado, let's go check this sucker out. So here we are looking at this fantastic machine, and. Um, I mean, how, how did you start now? Was this a shell? And um, why don't you explain yeah. to me what was done? Well, when Ravi showed up and uh, explained his vision for the car, which was where two generations meet, he wanted to combine his generation, my generation, so the classic car with modern technology. Mm -hmm. um, we discussed it a lot before we got on the, really got into the car and uh, he had such a clear vision of what he wanted to build, it made my job much easier. It's easier to build it when, when there's a clear image of what we're mm -hmm. trying to accomplish. We had a uh, 82 911 SC body that was on a jig, empty body shell, mm -hmm. that already had, had a sunroof delete. The mm -hmm. sunroof was filled in with a new panel. Mm -hmm. uh, it had the turbo wide flares in the front and rear. Mm -hmm. We had the wide steel bumpers, they are handmade steel bumpers that were made and uh, so we had a good starting point and uh, So this is uh, factory quarter panels and fenders uh, these, from a turbo? Well the, they are factory parts put on an AC car. They're butt welded, Healy arc welded so and hammer finished. So it looks like a factory car now. So no body filler no, or anything all. and it's all, all metal? Yeah, all metal. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, so this chassis was uh, acid dipped and everything to start yeah, off with? Correct, bare metal. And yeah. uh, did you seam weld it or anything for stiffness or? It has reinforcements in the front and rear for all the shocks because it's coil over instead mm -hmm. of the torsion springs. So we always reinforce the chassis on it. Uh, did you do anything else to increase the chassis rigidity? Well, 911 is a little, so it's a lot more flexy than a 964 for example, mm -hmm. but there's no longitudinal reinforcement or anything like that. So we have the five point strut bar in the trunk. So once we get there, I'll show that to you. Okay. And um, yeah. a lot of the, the trim, uh, is this like powder coat or? Um... It's all ceramic. Everything was ceramic coated. We took the door handles all apart and uh, ceramic coated them. Every piece of the moldings, they are all done in ceramic. The headlight bezels are ceramic. Is it Cerakote? It's Cerakote, yeah. Yeah, uh, Cerakote is a really durable coating and it's uh, pretty popular in the gun world and yeah. it's super abrasion resistant. Yeah, and it looks beautiful. It has a nice cool look to it. So this adds to that modern look that Robbie was looking for. And uh, what about the paint? 
Uh, the paint is a special color that we chose for the car. That took the longest. It was really a battle. We, we discussed that for months. Uh, we made a lot of spray outs and a lot of different ideas because, again, we wanted to maintain the classic look of the car, but with the modern flair and the paint. So I think we nailed it. It's kind of a warm titanium color, Correct. right? Yeah. Like, I'm a race car guy, so usually I don't geek out of our paint, but this <laughs> car looks like super outstanding. And uh, these are all like uh, OEM rubbers and everything uh, around the windows. And yeah, all the weather strip and much of the uh, body trim is factory and they fit the best. We don't use any aftermarket parts. And that's still available. It's all available, yeah. That's what I like about Porsche. Like yeah. the, you know, if you're into Japanese cars, they quit yeah. making parts as soon as they can. But uh, yeah. Porsche, I think they like to preserve their heritage or something, right? Yeah, Porsche has actually a new program, their uh, classic line. So they have a lot, they make, they are remaking now parts that were not available for many years. For example, they make brand new dashboards now. Oh, okay. And it's available from Porsche. Now these wheels, like I, they don't look like anything. I even know what it is. So these must be uh, very special. Yeah, Rotiform really, they really hit it out of the park. Uh, they made these uh, three-piece wheels <coughs> and uh, they work with us uh, making the center locks for them. Uh, one-off wheels, one-off center locks. So we, that was another very difficult choice because we were discussing that how do we maintain the original Porsche look so this has a little bit of the Campagnolo. It has a little bit of the Fuchs in it. So mm -hmm. we kind of tried to get all that together. And once we saw these, that design that they came up with, we knew it was the right one. Um, so what kind of hubs are they? Are they um, the center lock from cup car or? Well, it looks like a cup car, but it's just a slightly larger version of it. And, uh, is uh, it like the 991 style? Uh, it's similar to that style but it's a custom made for this car oh, it's, it's physically larger than the porsche cup car oh okay yeah. so it's custom made it's wow. custom made these are all custom made for this car wow wow and i mean i noticed this car has some like awesome one-off bits like the bumper uh some of the carbon bits for the arrow and did and yeah. your company fabricate those the uh bumpers were handmade so and they're metal they're all metal yeah and uh, in the front uh, the opening for the oil cooler it's all handmade steel as well and we scanned the bumpers and then made a uh, 3d printed mold or a buck for that spoiler and then we made a mold into it and finally the actual part was made so those are vacuum backed carbon fiber wow and you actually did the 3d printed buck yeah that's now, right. was, do you have like a huge bed scanner or did you make it smaller pieces and glued them together? No, Ravi luckily has some really good connections and uh, he, he was able to pull that out of his hat. How about the uh, hood and the deck lid? Are those carbon or? No, that's aluminum. Uh, oh, okay. The front hood is aluminum and uh, it has a 959 style gas door. So we fabricated a gas filler that goes right into that in the corner. And the uh, deck lid, it's aluminum. We wanted to maintain the car all aluminum. That was probably the greatest challenge in the build of the car. Um, it's uh, English wheeled um, and it's all aluminum. So when Porsche, even when they made the uh, RS cars, they were fiberglass. Yeah, fiberglass. Yeah, and uh, this is aluminum. So That's all aluminum? All aluminum, yeah, have made on an English wheel. Wow, and that carbon fiber insert was made in, in the same way as the air dam? Yeah, same idea and the same people made it and uh, it fits really nice and that kind of helps with that modern look of the car. Man, I can't believe these bumpers. Um, like these cars had the ugly American bumpers when they were yeah. Yeah, with the big rubber boots and all that and yeah. these are like sleek and really integrated into the chassis. And Yeah, that was the idea. They basically, they are 73 style bumpers. But then, of course, we had to fit them to that right where they come to the turbo white flare. So yeah. they match it. So that's all hand fabricated work. It's beautiful. Um, uh, what about uh, the brakes and things? Yeah, it has. That's another thing. Stop tech. Um, they were incredible. They worked with us. Um, they sent us the caliper halves in bare aluminum mm -hmm. and we had, in, we had them then anodized to our color to match 
the outer wheel rings, the rims, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, then we send it back to them and uh, they finish assembly and painting them. They painted their logos there for us and uh, incredible work what they did. We, I absolutely love the brakes. Well, awesome. Let's yeah. go take uh, see what's on the top of the engine. All right. So this is like a work of mechanical art. I don't even know where to begin. Can yeah. you begin? <laughs> well, it's, I guess it's part of our thing. To me, I like to look at the cars as mechanical jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is to make it not only extremely functional, but to make it so that it looks beautiful. Because cars, are, cars like this, they aren't really transportation cars. When you build a car like that, you want to make it so that when you open the hood, you realize that you have something really beautiful. Not only is it amazing mechanically, but it looks nice. And uh, I think that worked out in this case. Uh, 3.9 liter, based out of uh, 993, mm -hmm. 3.6 liter originally, now it's a 3.9. LNN and Molly, mm -hmm. uh, they got together and they made really a phenomenal uh, 11.4 to 1 compression piston and cylinder set. Mm -hmm. And that's really where it started from. And uh, Wow, that's pretty high for air-cooled and pump gas. It is. It's, it's pretty high, and that's about the highest you can go on it. Mm -hmm. And um, it works well. It has double knock sensors, so the Motec... Um, uh, it has a Motec M1? It has Motec M130. Oh, okay. And uh, <clears throat> it has really good knock detection on it, and we've, we haven't had any issues with knocking. Uh, big valves, big ports, the heads were ported, uh, high-tech headers, and uh, of course on top right here you see the drive-by-wire Kinsler mm -hmm. fuel injection on it. Oh, those are the actuators for drive-by-wire. Yeah, those are uh, Kinsler Motorsport actuators. They are probably the nicest actuators that you'll ever find anywhere. I was trying to figure out what that was, but it's actually for drive-by-wire uh, with yeah. ITBs. Yeah, ITBs. and That's, uh, that's <laughs> pretty... Pretty impressive. Yeah, and then uh, we have uh, Wiggins clamps here. Mm -hmm. So the plenum that uh, uh, Kinsler made, that was it's a billet plenum that they made for it, and uh, the plenum can be removed in just 20 seconds mm -hmm. by opening the Wiggins clamps on it. So it's easier to work on and easier to service. Uh, who, who did the wiring harness and everything? That's Rywire. Oh, okay. Uh, Brian at Rywire. It's the most beautiful harness I've ever seen in my life, and. Uh, I just keep my fingers crossed that he'll take my call every time I call him. <laughs> so. It has a coil, coil and plug ignition. Yes, coil and plug. And uh, who, who made the, uh, the cam covers? Those are Terret, Terret uh, Engineering. Oh, Terret did that. Yeah, Terret did that and uh, we anodized them to match the car so, or the motor. It's the same color as in the intake. And the uh, filter is incorporated into the plenum at the top? Yes, the filter is a long oval filter, so it goes all the way to the back of the plenum, and it's this shape, the oval shape, and it just goes in there, so it has a very large surface area. Oh, okay. So it doesn't restrict the airflow, and uh, we tested it on a dyno with and without the filter, and uh, the different difference with and without wasn't that much, mm -hmm. but it does restrict a little bit, but every filter does. Mm -hmm. But it's, mm -hmm. a good, it's a good solution what they did. So being a Porsche, it's dry sump, right? It's a dry sump, yeah. And I, I think with the oil coolers, this car has 12 and a half or 13 quarts of oil. Okay. So, you know, earlier we talked about the importance of uh, CSF coolers. These cars aren't just air cooled. They are air and oil cooled. Mm -hmm. So Ravis and all the oil coolers, the importance of the oil coolers and good oil cooling is critical. That's how these uh, engines are cooled. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ravi's oil cooler has been tested to be more effective and more efficient than the factory cooler. So we're going to use those in every car that we build. So there's an incredible amount of detail in the front of the car. I mean, uh, there's even upholstery. You want to give us a walkthrough about what's going on? Sure. Um, Carbo made us uh, this absolutely beautiful uh, trunk carpeting. Uh, tried to bring a little bit of sophistication in otherwise kind of a racy car mm -hmm. and uh, keep it clean. And uh, Rogelios put even a little piece of that uh, Goyard bag that is throughout the interior right there on that little bag oh, there. The, the little strap. Yeah, a little strap there. That's Goyard bag. 
Oh, well, is that a fancy purse? Yeah, that's. It used to be a purse until uh, he cut it with razor blades and uh, chopped it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like I don't know much about purses, but if it's in here, it must be a fancy purse. It is. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> Robbie had this great idea that let's do something that no one else does, and uh, he succeeded. Um, how about this, uh, like really elaborate brace? Yeah, it's uh, elephant racing um, strap bar. It really works well. It's easy to take it out because he has these quick uh, disconnect pins and uh, it has adjustments on them so that you can adjust it so it fits perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, 911s have a little bit of a weak spot on their strut towers, so especially if you drive it hard. Mm -hmm. So that helps keep the fenders apart from each other. If you look at a 911 that's been tracked without a strut bar, you'll see the fenders hitting the hood mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on them. And uh, this will help keep that away. And uh, here you can see our uh, 959 style uh, fuel filler, the cover. And uh, here's the uh, uh, carbon leather uh, fuel bib. Oh, okay. And uh, we made our own little uh, fuel neck here for it that then kind of snakes into the gas tank. I noticed the cap, that's the same thing that's on my GT3. Yeah, Porsche now makes these for all the uh, like aluminum caps, really cool retro cap. So And it goes to the stock fuel tank? Yeah, stock, yeah. It, that, that was a, one of the most complicated parts to make on the car because you had the shock tower, you had the G50 brake booster right behind it, mm -hmm. and then you have these bars all coming to, together right here. So the, the articulation of that pipe, how it had to run, mm -hmm. it was a little bit challenging, but uh, it worked out perfect. Are you running the power steering from um, the electric power steering? The power steering comes from Robbie's exercise. Uh, there is no, no power steering. It's no just muscles. Steering, okay. Yeah, 911 have they have very light front end. Okay. So you don't really need uh, power steering on them. Yeah, I was wondering if you were running the motorsports power steering because it has like really much wider front tires. Yeah, but not Nine, necessary. Huh? Correct. 964 is more. That's where you need it. They are yeah. a little bit heavier in the front. Then of course the aluminum hood on it. Um, I, I noticed yeah. that like all the hardware nuts and bolts are were they all removed and recad plated? Yes, yeah, everything was cap plated, and there's a lot of uh, chasing J's titanium uh, hardware. It's he was incredible. He made the interior panels. You'll probably see those later, and uh, a lot of the hardware in many places just absolutely beautiful, and uh, it has the anti gravity 1500 amp. Okay. Um, lithium super light battery. battery. Lithium battery. It's less than 15 pounds. Uh, what about the lights? You could tell that those aren't your regular 911 lights. Yeah, they're 911 uh, custom lights made by Carbone LED projector, and uh, the inside of the bezel there we paint it with the car color, so it kind of blends it in. It's just not like a black hole that a lot of the aftermarket lights. So Carbone really made a nice job. I really like this oil cooler, like it's <clears throat> reminiscent of the roof cars and I guess the uh, old RS cars, right? Yeah, that's, that was the whole idea to, again, to maintain that traditional Porsche uh, racing heritage. A lot of their race cars, 934s, 935s, they have those coolers. The RSs have those, the roof cars have those. Um, so we copied basically the RS bumper here mm -hmm. and all in steel and then we fitted the uh, CSF um, front oil cooler that really fits well. Fits well. We have um, uh, perfect fit onto the bumper. And it's a uh, CSF uh, cores are really strong, so yeah. it, it can it can take like uh, rockets and stuff and not get all messed up like a lot of these other heat exchangers. Yeah, no. It, to put a, a <clears throat> poor or thin oil cooler in the front of a car that has an engine that costs what it costs, it's not worth putting a cheap cooler there that may blow up. Yeah. Man, just the attention to detail, like this bumper is amazing and the carbon work and all the little things, the fasteners, wow. Yeah, you really yeah. did a great Thank job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, the idea was to make it look like a factory built. The attention to detail uh, goes all the way to the bottom of the car and for the um, heat exchanger in the front, you actually had to modify the unibody, right? Yeah, what we do is we cut a big opening in the back of that 
the tub, the front uh -huh. trunk, and we move the floor of the tub back so that the air has somewhere to go. I mean, the, a lot of people just put the coolers against the front face of that, the body or the tub, and the air has nowhere to go, so the cooler is almost useless at that point. So we cut a big opening on it and, uh, and build a plate on it so it looks like a factory piece. And uh, in this case, we built also a fan shroud and put dual spall fans on it mm -hmm. that are thermostat controlled. Okay. So it works. And you also have a really big uh, heat exchanger for the oil right here, right? Yeah, that's the uh, new CSF fender cooler. Um, it's, it fits in the factory location. You can use it as a re replacement for a factory oil cooler. And it's, in my opinion, better than the factory oil cooler. So it's a really heavy duty, excellent oil cooler. And these two are in series. So the oil flows through both of them and then goes back. So the combination of the two coolers helps keep this oil temperature down. And uh, this is the Terret suspension? Yeah, it's their Terret 935 style factory, so-called race suspension. Uh, Heim joints at every, every corner and uh, it's just a phenomenal thing. Once you bolt it on and it, just bolting it on, you can tell that it's incredible in quality. I mean, it's, I, I, don't, I can't imagine how anybody would need more of a suspension than an I-11. It really is a good setup. And of course, it's hooked up to the beautiful KWs here in the corners and uh, bump steer kit. So it's a really good front suspension. Yeah, you can tell that uh, roll center has been addressed, bump steer. Um, I like the center piece that um, helps the chassis rigidity. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really simple, but it gets the job done. Yeah. Uh, I see they worked on getting the steering rack location good. And it's a Terrett torsion bar style uh, anti-sway bar with like adjustable blades. Yeah, that's a factory uh, RSR oh, it's adjustable. A factory part. Yeah, it's a factory. It's, Terrett makes it, but it's a copy of the RSR sway bar. So it's five, five uh, different adjustments on it. And it spins and bearings. That's, that's really nice. Yeah, it's a really good setup. Yeah, it's simple and elegant, and I think it gets the job done really well. Yeah, there's also one little thing that was added on at the end, and it was a good idea. It's that little slip low that is underneath the uh, front uh, splitter there. Without that, I think that splitter would have already been replaced. Uh, it adds a lot of strength to it. And um, if you hit a low driveway or speed bump, it really helps. So that's a good deal. And you can't see it on the outside, and it adds a lot of strength to it. And another thing, the, uh, the oil lines that I didn't mention earlier, the BMRS, uh, ultralight, uh, super high pressure, just beautiful oil lines. Uh, they weigh, they, they feel silly almost when you hold them in your hand. They're so light and yet they're, their strength is amazing. So, so it's an aramid cover instead of braided stainless. Yes, so. yeah, super nice oil lines. So we really like what they did for this car. They came through big time. And the, the horns are relocated here? We had to, yeah, they were, we were just kind of running out of space. Uh, oil cooler here, air conditioning, condenser here. So every corner is taken up for something. And what, what's this uh, plug here? Oh, that's for the uh, anti-gravity built-in battery charger. So all you need to do is just bring a, an extension cord and plug it in and the car is in charge. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty neat. Here we are underneath the um, the engine, yeah. and uh, first thing I notice is um, it doesn't seem to leak much oil. So you sure this is a real 911? Yeah, it's the old, old joke that uh, if it's not leaking oil, you got to add some because it's out. But uh, we were really lucky with this. Um, after one initial minor oil, oil leak that was repaired, uh, we're in pretty good shape here. It's, uh, it's so dry that it's getting me nervous. That where's the oil? <laughs> So, um, yeah, it, it turned out great. Uh, Fabiana Prado Motor Works did a great job uh, sealing up the motor. Uh, it, it's ceramic uh, coated. The, the entire engine case was ceramic coated. The mm -hmm. timing cases were ceramic coated. Um, and then we have the John Gradinsky uh, high-tech headers here with the... You can see his signature anti-reversion cone. Yeah, those are amazing. We just love his work. Um, 
So the, for people that don't know, um, you notice how the header is stepped so the diameter changes, and this chamber actually prevents the exhaust from flowing backwards into the cylinder when the engine's on overlap, yeah. so it helps uh, improve the power band. Um, the workmanship is great. Um, uh, I, these headers are pretty awesome. Yeah, they're great. There's three different diameter pipes, so if you look at the pipe diameters, uh, we got one, two, and three here, and then the anti-reversers on it, so yeah, it's, it's beautiful work. It's all ceramic coated, and uh, then we valve them, so they have the vacuum operated valves here that can be controlled by the Motec. They can be either controlled so that they open and close at certain RPMs, or you can put a switch on it, so it's quiet and loud so version. just like the uh, stock uh, late model car, yeah. and this is a uh, GT3 RS titanium muffler, yeah. I recognize that. Yeah, it's a 997-991 uh, GT3 RS that we modified. I, I, I could see you sectioned it to clear that part of the chassis. Yeah, uh, we had to bring it back about inch and a quarter, and uh, it worked out great. We made our own titanium uh, GT3 style exhaust tips for it. Or better than the GT3 looking. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty cool, they're titanium, so it goes with the exhaust. Oh man, how much power does this engine make? Well, it made 387 wheel horsepower at the World Dyno, in the wind tunnel dyno, which translates to about uh, 466 on the crank, which is, which is great. We're very happy with the numbers and uh, uh, for 3.9 liter, it's crazy numbers for a 2200 or 2100 pound car. It's yeah, cars that's... quick. <laughs> what about the rear suspension? Yeah, these are 935 uh, turbo trailing arms. Mm -hmm. And uh, since the car is an SC car, so we had to modify the uh, torsion tubes uh, we, made, we installed the um, turbo trailing arm mounts mm -hmm. and um, I mean they fit perfectly here now. They use the uh, spring plates from Terret, which mm -hmm. are the adjustable RSR spring plates which allow you to do really, really good rear wheel alignment on them. Oh yeah, you can see that yeah. right there. Yeah, and um, since we are here, the gearbox that we have here, we put a G50 in it, which is from 87 to 89, 911s, mm -hmm. which is longer than the 915 that was in a SC car. So in order to fit it here, it, the bell housing is shortened by 27 millimeters, okay. so a little over an inch. And it has a special clutch that- What kind of clutch? It's a turbo special, like a roof style clutch oh, okay. that is made for the small short bell housing. And uh, it, it can withstand the power just fine. And in order to put this longer gearbox in the car, the torsion tube has to get notched also a little bit in the front mm -hmm. to make sure that it fits well. And it's reinforced heavily, it's welded onto the body and we built a lot of reinforcements on it. The gearbox has a limited slip in it. It has a billet side cover for the differential. Okay. That's a little bit of a weak spot if there's any weak spot on a G50. So there's a billet side cover billet tranny mount. Um, we just changed recently the transmission mounts in the little bit softer okay. rubber mounts. They were semi-solid and they were a little bit noisy. Okay. It, they transmitted quite a bit of vibration in the car and these work really well. It has a wave track limited slip? Wave track limited slip, yeah. yeah. Um, and th this is a uh, Terret? Anti-sway bar? Turret, rear anti-sway bar, and uh, it's it, like the front. It's a copy of the factory RSR 935 style. Um, very good sway bar. We use those in every car we built. And it has a lot of adjustment range, and the yeah. uh, it's all in double shears, so that's yeah. real nice. Yeah, it's strong. And KW suspension? KW, of course, yeah. And it's a coilover conversion. On yeah. Stock, these are torsion bar, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's why we reinforce the uh, front where the hats are. So those are, they have reinforcement. The factory, there's actually a factory reinforcement part mm -hmm. available for that. So we use those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Man, it's uh, really, really nice. Great work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I guess now it's time to look at the interior. All right. Like a fancy purse. Yeah. <laughs> so we tapped out Simo, and now we have Ravi here to talk about the interior of the car, which 
I mean, I'm totally not into show cars, but I have to say, I really like this. You want to explain some of this? Because I have no taste <laughs> and uh, I don't even know. Sure, Mike. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the car in itself is, especially with the silver paint and it being very monochromatic with like the, uh, the you know, the gray Cerakote and uh, we wanted the interior to pop a little bit. So, and we wanted to also hold its own, you know, to go along with all the performance that's done on the car. Um, so the biggest draw on the car when it comes to the interior is the fabric that was used for, you know, the seats, dash paneling, uh, the Momo steering wheel hub, uh, you know, and then tasteful little um, inserts all around the car, like mm -hmm. on the back shelf, uh, some on the roll bar, you know, uh, handbrake handle. Um, that's all Goyard. And, uh, you know, a lot of people may not know what Goyard is. It's I, a, I sure don't. <laughs> so Goyard is an upscale luxury brand. Uh, and they're known for making like purses, luggage, uh, you know, really upscale, like wallets, all that type of stuff. It's almost comparable to what like a Louis Vuitton would be. Oh, okay. And, uh, and you didn't want to do Louis Vuitton because it's been there, done that for cars. Well, you know, one of the things that Simo and I were going back and forth on was uh, the color of the exterior paint and the interior fabric that we were going to use and in a lot of resto mods or like what you see with a lot of porsche restorations now it's you know it's kind of like the same thing you either get like tartan fabric or basket weave leather or you do like pasha and these are all like different types of fabric i wanted to get a uh high-end luxury fabric that also had its own pattern it, it kind of pays homage to the the classic Porsche patterns too, I, I know this. Absolutely, and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to find a pattern in itself, <laughs> but it was, you know, luxurious. So this is uh, made out of canvas, and you know, over time it's gonna patina really well. And uh, you know, Goyard, what they're known for is their chevron pattern. It's the only thing they put on their, uh, on their goods. So that chevron pattern is consistent throughout, and Roger from Rogelio's Upholstery did an uh, amazing job in lining it up to be like over different panels or different types of uh, sections with the leather. So what did you do? You, did you buy three million purses and cut them up or? <laughs> um, you know, so one of the things about Goyard too is it's really difficult to get because you have to buy it at the boutique. There's only five boutiques in the entire United States. One of them so happens to be in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. So Simo and I came up with a little gaming system of, you know, going up there, testing, getting one bag. He actually sent his wife into the store to buy the rest of them. I think we ended up buying eight bags. Uh, to be able to complete the interior. And, you know, Roger came in with some of his engineering background. We figured out what the best bang for your buck was because these bags are not cheap. They're about 1800 bucks each. And uh, so there's about $10,000 in bags, uh, maybe even a little bit more uh, that it took to make this interior. So you have to kind of deconstruct them and try to use the materials and stuff like that. So the bag that we chose to buy was their <laughs> biggest tote bag. And um, it was also, you know, because it's a tote bag and doesn't have a lot of construction, um, it was really malleable once you started to take the fabric apart. We were able to wrap it around really easily around, you know, edges and corners, obviously the seat upholstery and everything that, you know, we put it around. And uh, the rest of it is like Alcantara and some kind of leather, I think? Yeah, so it's a mix of uh, gray Alcantara and gray leather. Um, kind of ties in that monochromatic feel that we had going on with the exterior of the car and letting just the, you know, burgundy stitching and the burgundy fabric of the Goyard kind of pop out. Um, I think it looks really nice, kind of goes together with the, you know, the burgundy um, seat belts that we have as well. And it looks just like uh, factory Porsche custom shop stuff. Yeah, we really wanted to elevate the level of coach work that we put in the car. And uh, Rogelio's upholstery was really able to uh, not just execute it really well, but he actually came in as a critical partner, Roger did, uh, to kind of help us decide where we were going to put leather, where we were going to put um, you know, Alcantara, how it was all going to flow together. Um, we didn't want to overdo it. So we really kind of just got to a point where like, all right, I think we're good on how everything looks. And, uh, but you know, it's still a very technical interior in terms of performance. Um, these are Sparco's uh, top of the line SPX seats that they make in Italy. 
And one of the reasons I chose to use these, uh, you know, if you can recall, we did a similar episode on my 991 Turbo S, mm -hmm. my thousand horsepower car. That car had the same seats mm -hmm. and I fell in love with them. They're really comfortable. They're very uh, easy to, you know, continue to drive in for thousands of miles. Uh, you know, you can take them on a road trip. But one of the biggest things about this car, it, about these seats, is it's adjustable. Mm -hmm. And in these old 911s, there's not a lot of telescopic movement on the steering wheel. So th being able to adjust the seating position um, is really helpful in trying to find the right way to drive this car. And they're carbon fiber and really, really light for what they are, I suppose, right? Yep, carbon fiber back seats, super lightweight. It's our top of the line seat. I think these retail for about $3,000 each. Wow, okay. And uh, you have a roll bar in here. Yeah, so that roll bar was made in-house uh, by SV Auto. Mm -hmm. So Tito, the head fabricator over there, uh, was able to make this really trick roll bar. Um, this, uh, the horizontal section where the harness retainer's on, that's actually removable. So if I'm going to the track, I can have it in the car. If I'm not going to the track and I want a little bit extra space, I can remove that. Um, it's really nice with all the gussets and how they triangulated it. And uh, you know, we, we eliminated the back seats just for a little bit more weight savings. And then you know, towards the front, one of the things that I always wanted in my car was a CAE shifter. Um, I never had one. I've been in different cars that had them. It's got a really cool notchy feel to it, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit heavier of a shifter. But I think that really kind of ties in that, you know, you're still driving a resto mod car. Uh, so I really like that, um, you know, feel of everything going on there. How, how about the, uh, these billet harness mounts? They look pretty cool. Yeah, those are pretty nice. Those are actually uh, from GMG. Oh, and okay. they're meant for a new, mo like a modern day Porsche, like a GT3 uh, roll bar. Uh, you know, it's the same diameter um, ID. So we were able to put them onto this uh, bar as well. It has sort of a modern audio system, right? But it's a simplistic one. So, you know, similar to what Simo was telling you earlier about how Porsche is coming out with their classic series of parts. Mm -hmm. um, they've also come out with this classic radio. Okay. And uh, it's actually got um, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, um, you know, gives you all those creature comforts of a modern uh, system with navigation and a small little screen as well. Um, so we bought that from Porsche and what we realized a few weeks before SEMA, once we put it on, it kind of looked out of place. It was like, you know, this like black box. Mm -hmm. It had a lot of cool features in a small screen, but it just didn't really fit and flow with the dash of, uh, you know, a backdate 911. So we reached out to a company out of Detroit, uh, who's auction craft, uh, the owner, Brian, um, you know, he had a prototype idea of mm -hmm. making this basically uh, radio cover. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, he was able to whip it out for us. He overnighted it to us. And it's, it's really nice because it kind of moves the screen back, covers it all up. You can still get all the functionality of the buttons and the knobs, uh, but just kind of you know, flows better with the dash. Uh, Brian's actually the company, uh, Auction Craft is also the same company that gave us uh, the rear view mirror on the driver's side. Okay. And then some of the um, billet hooks for the deck lid and hinges for the front and back. Um, are anything special about the speakers? Uh, it's, uh, I believe they're McClintock spe speakers. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, <laughs> this is kind of a funny story. Simo and I went back and forth on if I could put a, you know, more of an audiophile sound system in the car. And he told me the engine was a sound system. So, you know, it's nice, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of speakers in there. They're pretty high quality for just having two speakers mm -hmm. in the car. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the two speakers down there. Uh, he's got these really nice matte pockets that he's developed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you can add, you know, some of the things that you need to put in there. Uh, these bags are just additional storage. These actually came inside the larger tote bags. Oh, so okay. we wanted to repurpose them and uh, they came up with a really cool idea to put it with a magnet and it's got some uh, just buttons right here. So mm -hmm. you can just pull it out and take it with you if you want to you know, take your man purse with you, Mike. It's actually got an entire fiberglass kit inside as well, just to kind of give it a little bit more, uh, you know, of a complete finish. And that whole fiberglass kit has been, you know, trimmed in house by SV Auto, and then it was upholstered in Alcantara by Rogelio's upholstery. Oh, okay. So uh, all the sills and all that is all like a fiberglass insert. Yeah, fiberglass insert that they spent quite a bit of time to, you know, trim it, make sure it fit the way they wanted it to, and then we got it upholstered. How about the electric windows? Uh, yeah, so electric windows, uh, those work really nicely. And uh, one of the things about 
this car is, it's all got the OEM slightly green tinted glass. Mm -hmm. So that gives it a really nice period correct finish. And, um, you know, it works really well. Uh, the car doesn't have air conditioning? It does have air conditioning. Oh, it does? Okay. Yeah, so um, it's got an electric AC system. Ah. And I think that's one of the coolest features about the car. Most people will put the compressor in the engine compartment. Mm -hmm. And I think it kind of takes away from, you know, the engine. Mm -hmm. This car's got an electric AC system where uh, the control unit is actually underneath the trunk mat in the front. Wow, okay. And it uses uh, a Porsche like 986, 987 Boxster condenser, and it's put um, underneath the uh, headlight in the front wheel well. Wow. Uh, what about all your instrumentation? So, um, you know, going next to the radio, uh, you have the HVAC control system, mm -hmm. and that's also a billet piece. Um, so that's an upgraded piece made by Renline. Okay. And Renline makes a lot of really cool uh, billet components for interior parts. So like these door uh, pins for the lock, those are billet. The gauges are made by North Hollywood gauges. Oh, okay. Um, it I'm actually, with them. Yeah, so it actually took two sets of gauges to make that one set of gauges. Mm -hmm. So it's got some really nice LED uh, illumination to it, um, and it works really well. Hollywood is pretty famous for their gauge restoration. Yeah, it's kind of an art, you know, and they've been around uh, in business for a long time, so they uh, they've been doing a good job with that. Uh, the wheel is a Momo Prototipo wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's kind of like the standard wheel a lot of people put in their Porsche. We actually took that wheel and sent it to Carbone in Poland, and they reupholstered to us with the 12 o'clock marker. We sent them a strip of fabric, and they put it together for us. Um, before we sent it to them. We actually deconstructed the wheel and sent the center section out to get Cerakoted to match everything else. So, you know, a lot of these details took a lot of work and a lot of stages to be able to f complete the way we wanted them to like, just make sure everything flowed through the car. And the uh, dead pedal and uh, floor plate and passenger dead pedal, that was something you had custom fabricated? So that's all made by Chasing Jays and that's all made out of titanium. So uh, Dominic is a good friend of mine and he helped not only with making those components, but a lot of the bolts and uh, hardware that's on the car is also titanium. He even put like the logo of the car as a CSF 911. So it's just, uh, it kind of makes that bottom of the car pop out a little bit because otherwise usually it's kind of lost and forgotten. Man, this is beautiful. I mean, inside and out, upside down. Um, this is like probably one of the most impressive uh, just builds on, on any kind of car, race car, street car. You know, it's thoroughly modern, but it still pays homage to its roots. Uh, it doesn't deviate too far from the factory, but uh, brings everything up to uh, modern spec. Uh, you did a killer job, and man, you gotta be proud of this. Yeah, thank you, Mike. I'm, I'm really proud of it, and uh, I think it's exactly what I wanted it to be. You know, there was really no cut corners. Uh, the collaboration between Simo and his team at SV Auto and myself uh, was really special. It was a really great experience, and, uh, you know, I got to say, it was really nice of Simo to allow me to bring in a lot of my guys to work on the car as well. You know, um, a lot of the people that he had not uh, had worked with prior to working with me, whether it was Bo Brown who did the tuning or Ryan from Rywire who did the electronics, you know, Roger was the one who did the upholstery. Uh, you know, I brought in Rotorform and Falcon Tires. So these were brands that he normally hadn't worked with before, but uh, he trusted me and uh, you know, the product speaks for itself. I think everyone really put their best work into the car. And really this is a showcase, uh, not just of, you know, this being my car, but all the people involved who, you know, really put their best work into you know making the CSF 911. So there you have it. Probably the most coolest, most integrated, most tasteful feature car we ever had. Uh, thank you for bringing it here, Rob. I really appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for having me and Simo over here to check out the car. Awesome. So if you like this content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe to our channel and uh, be sure to comment and give us likes. It all helps us out. Um, if you want to see more features uh, on vehicles, put that in the comments and we'll do more. So until next time, I guess I'll see you later.